Welcome everybody to the International College of Integrative Medicine podcast, translating science to clinical practice since 1983. I'm your host, Luke W. Russell, and today I'm joined by Dr. Robin Sika. Dr. Sika, thanks for taking time to sit down and talk with me. Oh, thank you so much for having me. So tell me a little bit about your practice. Well, I've been in practice now uh, of integrative medicine for over 33 years. I've had patients uh, now that that I've been seeing for 30 years and wow. you know they come in once a year and they're healthy and they they feel great and they're like thank you so much and I don't even remember how sick they were when they came in 20 years ago or 30 yeah. years ago and they'll be like you know you saved my life and I'll be like I did really <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah like, don't you remember I had this and I had this and I had this and I was like I totally forgot because I just think of them as healthy people now it's amazing yeah it's really amazing the longevity you know the that longevity of relationship with patients that we have how how did you get into the integrative focus? Because that means you spent the vast majority of your career focused on integrative practicing. Um, how did that come to be? Well, very early on, actually, when I was a when I was a resident, I I uh, was really unhappy with conventional medicine. I was unhappy with prescribing medication, with just you know the hospital experience. It was like, wh- why are we spending all this time on disease states and not doing any prevention? So I started very early in my career taking uh, courses in Boston and different places, going to conferences like this one uh, very early in my career. So I would say like I was in integrative medicine from the day I set my practice up, yeah. <laughs> literally. So yeah. Um, what's new in your practice over the last 12 months? Um, I, I would say, you know, I've, I've kind of actually been downsizing a little bit and I'm doing a little bit more um, hands-on and like more relating to the patients. And so I used to have a big, huge staff and a mm-hmm. big, huge operation. And now I'm, I get to spend more time with the patients and, and, and that type of thing because it kind of just, made, you know, it's a little more cozy practice, I should yeah. say. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, have there been any new things you feel like you've been noticing or uncovering over the recent months or years? Well, I would say, you know, it, it's an ongoing, um, it's just an ongoing education. It's like yeah. this conference here has just been absolutely amazing at um, putting putting pieces together, a lot of which I've been using for a very long time, IV vitamin C um, mm-hmm. and that type of thing. I wouldn't consider myself a cancer expert, but of course, we all have patients that come in with either with cancer for some other issue or come in because they want the nutritional support for their immune system and to you know be able to get through the chemotherapy or whatever their choices are about their treatment plan they need the the integrative support around that so it's really wonderful to to have this conference to see what the the real like integrative oncology people are doing Mm -hmm. so that i can take that home and go well you know i've got this piece and this piece and this piece and i'm going to add this piece you know, I'm going to add butyrate was just the last je- lecture. I'm going to add more vitamin K into the into my mm-hmm. protocol. Gee, I was pretty close on the mushroom track, uh-huh. but I'm going to tweak it this way. You know, yeah. and you get those little those little hints here at ICIM, those little you know protocols, and and it's also very um, <sighs> confirming, edifying to say, hey, I'm not so far off the mark. I mean, yeah. I wouldn't consider that I treat cancer. I, mean, I wouldn't put that out as my specialty right. and yet I was doing a pretty good job yeah you know? so that's kind of nice <laughs> yeah um what's been can you think of a story from the last year or two just something that's been particularly interesting or startling that that's kind of stood out in your mind with one of your patients oh goodness there's a lot of them a lot of them uh, you know I I have patients come all the time from you know the conventional doctors I, I'm in Connecticut so mm-hmm. you know that I see a lot of patients that come from Yale or you know, the New York hospitals, et cetera. And and it's just amazing how fragmented the conventional care has been, uh, has, you know, become. And they're just kind of falling through the cracks or they're getting misdiagnosed, you know, very hasty diagnoses. And, and, uh, you know, for instance, I had a patient who came in, she was a 26 year old with, um, they diagnosed her with Lyme disease, but she also had really bad joint pain. And I'm like, I'm not sure this is, excuse me, they diagnosed her with MS. And I misspoke. And I said, I think this is Lyme disease because she had the joint pain and everything. And uh, she couldn't really tolerate the antibiotics, the, the prescription antibiotics. And she even had a hard time with the herbal antibiotics. But I, put, I gave her um, a full-spectrum hemp oil, and her pain went away. Wow. And she went back to work. 
Wow. She's a waitress. So can you imagine if you have a numb hand trying to carry one of those big yeah. and joint pain in oh your hand goodness. trying to carry one of these yeah. like, huge trays oh. of food, you know? So she, and she went back to work and I uh, she emailed me the other day. She goes, I've just been so busy and I'm feeling great and that's why I haven't been oh. in. You know, so it's been like nine, ten months since I've seen her wow. and she's just you know, she's just doing great. So, you know, that's that's one another patient that's been coming in. He had um, was diagnosed with thyroid cancer, had a thyroid nodule. And, you know, we did some very simple things, some iodine, which Dr. Brownstein talked about again this weekend. And, you know, we did iodine, we looked at his fluoride and bromine, did some IV vitamin C, put him on some simple nutrients, got his vitamin D up, did a thermography and his thyroid nodule's gone. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And he didn't want to have surgery. And they were they kept saying, you have to have surgery, you have to have surgery. He has no markers for, for cancer oh at goodness. this point. Now, you know, it's, it's an ongoing process, especially yeah. with cancer. It's, it's a management issue. It's, you know, people think of, oh, I, I'll go get the chemotherapy, I'll go get the surgery, and then I'm cured. Well, no, it's an ongoing process of managing the disease, just like you would manage high blood pressure, you'd manage diabetes. We just do it with different strategies, you know. Yeah. How do you think you've transformed over, as a physician and a clinician, and over the 33 years, did I get that number right? Something like um, that. Something yeah. like that, somewhere in the 30 <laughs> plus years. Making me feel very old. Yeah. Like <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, how do you feel like you've transformed as a physician? Well, like I said, I started out very early on, studied um, mm -hmm. environmental medicine, studied with Jeff Bland, nutrition, nutritional biochemistry kind of stuff. Very early on, studied all the, what's now considered functional medicine, put that into my practice, and then you know started integrating allergy t testing and treatment. I studied with Broda, the Broda Barnes Foundation, and you know kind of the integrative approach to endocrinology and hormone balancing. So it's like it's a matter of like layering. You know, and then I studied chelation therapy and heavy metals and IV nutritional strategies. And it's like it's it's like over the years, you know, you come to conferences like this and you you know, learn something and you layer it into what you're already doing just mm -hmm. to make that whole. So it's not like this all of a sudden, you know, bingo, you know, yeah, like, eureka yeah. kind of thing. It's it's like you just keep adding and tweaking and improving, and we're still doing a lot of things that I've been doing for 30 years that work. Yeah. You know? How do you feel like the medical landscape has shifted over your 30 years of practicing? Well, I think, I, you know, as I mentioned before, I think that the this trend toward huge hospital systems taking over individual practices and, you know, kind of demanding, especially, you know, where I am, it's very standard of care. Mm -hmm. It's very, very narrow and becoming more narrow that physicians really can't use their own judgment at all. Yeah. I mean, the VA system won't let physicians even give vitamin D until the level's under 20, which is grossly wow. deficient, you know, grossly yeah. deficient. So you're like, why is this, you know, like it's getting more restrictive in that world and more fragmented and patients just are getting less, uh, less comprehensive care. I'm not saying, saying they're getting bad care, but they're yeah. just getting less attention, less time with the physicians. I have a slide, one of my PowerPoint presentations, which is hysterical. It's a guy at his computer, because we're all on electronic medical record, right? He's <laughs> typing away. The patient's on the exam table behind him. He hasn't even looked at the patient. And he says, Mr. Smith, I'm really concerned about your cholesterol levels. And the nurse is standing next to the patient who has arrows shot through his body, and he's bleeding. <laughs> oh. And she says, Doctor, I really think you ought to look at the patient. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and that's how it is. Yeah. It's sort of like we get so micro-focused on these, you know, things that are maybe important, maybe not so important, and you forget, here's the patient bleeding to death, yeah. you know, and we're not, you know, and that's what I see happening. So I think there's gonna be a big trend as people wake up and see what we have to offer and move in that direction. And it's also even pushing some of the conventional um, systems in that direction too, as some of the speakers here were talking about, they're working in, uh, you know, with in conjunction with hospitals mm -hmm. and more traditional oncologists, et cetera. And I was actually, a patient of mine went down to MD Anderson not long ago, and they actually had a really reasonable, like, basics of an integrative program, and I was like, wow. That's so <laughs> cool, was, yeah. So, I mean, you know, there are some hospitals that are getting it and starting to adopt some of the principles that we that we have. I mean, certainly the science is there. Yeah. And you, you can only deny that there is no science if you haven't looked. Yeah. If you haven't read, 
that's the yeah. only way you can say there's no there's no research, there's no outcomes, there's no data there. You can't say that anymore. There's thousands and thousands and thousands of papers on every one of these aspects of what mm -hmm. we do. You know? Yeah. I'll be back with more in a little bit for my interview with Robin Sika. First, let's listen in as Wendy Chapel, our executive director at ISOM, shares a few thoughts. Hello everyone, and thank you, Luke. I want to start by reading our mission statement from our website, icimed.com. The International College of Integrative Medicine is a community of dedicated physicians who advance innovative therapies in integrative medicine by conducting educational conferences, supporting research, and cooperating with other scientific organizations while always promoting the highest standards of practice. Now that sounds very nice, and it is really what we do, line by line. It's, it's how we spend our time and our budget. But I think the most important thing to know about ISOM is that when, when people are part of ICIM, they connect with each other in a very special way. They are able to find like-minded um, healers who can speak their language and who share their obsessive love of science. I call it obsessive because it seems like all you guys want to do is learn. And they support each other emotionally in a scene that can be quite isolating for a lot of our docs. It's great to be in a group of people who enjoys the same kind of success in a field that is not always given credit for their success. Come join us. Check it out. ICIMED.com. Thanks, Wendy. Now, let's get back to my interview with Robin Sika. What... What would you love for um, either medical students, residents, or fresh, fresh out of residency physicians to hear? Come to an ISOM conference. <laughs> ICIM has, I, I'm, I brag a little bit about yeah. ICIM because I'm a past president and um, love this organization. It's one of the best out there. I've been to a lot of different meetings and this is always the best. Um, but we, we do have a scholarship program. It's called mm -hmm. the Mitchell Fund and uh, students and residents and brand new doctors could mm -hmm. actually apply for a scholarship to come here because they're you know not making a lot of money yeah. You yeah. Know, it's hard for them to get to a conference like this yeah. um, so we actually have a, a fund uh, okay. for, for that purpose to encourage young doctors and encourage young students and a number of the people that are here that are present are actually people that doctors that came as students oh, that's yeah. so cool yeah now they're members yeah. they're on our board it's like you know yeah because they get it yeah so um you said that it was called the mitchell fund and i assume yes. best way to figure out that is to go through the icim ed dot com or dot org uh, yeah icimed.com dot com yeah, oh, yeah. icimed.com icimed.com and that's where so they'd they'd be able to get more information and right or contact yeah. Wendy Wendy yeah Wendy, Wendy, Wendy <laughs> is is the magical behind the scenes um, she is indeed uh, so you've been as you said you've been around ICIM for a long time um, could you talk to me a little bit about how ICIM has impacted your um, your practice and you as a physician. Well, I mean, I, I think that, you know, the, the, the lectures that are presented here are always cutting edge. So I may know a lot, like I said before, yeah. I mean, these uh, lectures on cancer, it's like, oh yeah, I know about vitamin C and whatever, but I always learn something. Yeah. And I always learn something that I can apply to my patients, as we say on Monday morning. <laughs> we always, yeah. that's always our kind of benchmark that we really want to be you know, making sure that, that it's practical and usable. It's not just some data research out there. Yeah. It's not that we don't present the data and the research, but you know, that you can actually take it home and utilize it and, yeah. and make your patients better with it. So that's one thing that, you know, I've learned so much here. Um, I've learned so much from the vendors here, the people that come and, you know, have a product mm -hmm. or a service that they provide. Um, I've learned so much from my colleagues just standing in the hallway, you know, and the support. The co you know, I've been in other organizations where it's sort of like you go there and you meet a bunch of people and 
sort of like if they saw you again, they wouldn't even know who you are. You know, yeah. you come here and you walk in and you get, you know, a hundred hugs in a minute. You know? Yeah. <laughs> it's, like, it's, you know, everybody's like so glad to see each other. You know, these are my old friends and I've been through some rough times in my life and, you know, they were there for me. <clears throat> Excuse me. And hopefully I've been there for other people when they were going through, you know, challenges in their life yeah. too. So it's, it's, it's more, it's a, it's really a support organization for, you know, we're out there in the world doing what we're doing. We're banging our heads, you know, literally yeah. against the ceiling <laughs> trying to yeah. break through. Um, you know, you get beat up a little bit sometimes, but, um, you know, it's, it's, to have that kind of support and group of colleagues that you can call or you can see at a meeting and you know you understand you're not out there alone by yourself mm -hmm. you know the the rate of physician burnout across the board is massive these days as a huge topic yeah. of physicians in conventional medicine etc getting just totally burned out yeah. by what they're doing is it's skyrocketing and it's sad people are leaving the profession because you know it's just not rewarding anymore. Yeah. So, you know, to have that kind of support, but also to be doing something where you know you're making a difference for people. You know, I when I walk in there and I see this patient that's, you know, stage, he was stage four colon carcinoma, almost died in the hospital when they did his surgery, he was obstructed. That was six years, we, he, we, he comes to my office, he sees another doctor mm -hmm. in Arizona and he's got several different doctors around the country because he travels a lot. But he, when he's in Connecticut, he comes to my office for his IVC, and we actually celebrated his sixth year birthday, wow. I called it, yeah. his sixth year anniversary when he wasn't supposed to live a week. Wow. And he's, he's feeling great. He just went to Europe for a month with family. You know, great quality of yeah. life. He's feeling great. His cancer markers are down to zero. Does oh, he still man. have a mass? Yeah. yeah, it's still there, but he's alive and just loving every day of being alive yeah. and it's just it's so rewarding to see those people what would you say to your colleagues about self-care as a physician hmm, that's a tough one <laughs> <laughs> that's a tough one i mean i think having a support group having colleagues is important mm -hmm. taking time for yourself doing your own you know meditation massage whatever it is that rejuvenates you Coming to a, a conference like this rejuvenates me because fresh knowledge, yeah. you know, meeting friends, etc. I mean, I think that's really, really important. You know. Yeah. What What about? Um, is it common for physicians to feel guilty to want to take time off? Is that? I, I don't. Good. Yeah. <laughs> I don't. I'd like to be working three days a week instead of four. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I. I I think that's probably the case. I mean, a lot of physicians, especially you see the surgeons and the more conventional doctors, and they're working these 12, 14, 18 hour yeah. days. And I, I'm like, you know, six days a week and they're in the hospital. I'm like, how, how, you, you can sustain that for a while, yeah. but how are you going to sustain that year in and year out? You know, yeah. you just, you have to take care of yourself. You have to take vacations. You have to, you know, have a hobby, mm -hmm. have a, have a dog yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or two. <laughs> Or a cat, or a yeah. horse, some, 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 mm -hmm. something. You know, take walks out in nature, take yeah. walks in the woods. Um, how does the ICIM membership <laughs> affect you beyond the conferences? So, I mean, the conferences help you with knowledge. You come here and you get rejuvenated. But then what is, how does ICIM uh, play a role in your practice beyond the conferences? Well, I would say, you know, it's really what the knowledge that I take back, yeah. you know, but also the ability to call a friend and say, gee, I've got this case, like, what do I do? I'm not quite sure. You know, yeah, I had a test, that po uh, stool test that came back positive for a really unusual fungal organism this past summer, and I called mm -hmm. up John Trowbridge. I'm like, John, what would you do? You're the fungus yeah. guy. You know everything there is to know about yeast. Like, what would you do? And he goes, oh, do this and this. Okay, great. You know, and you have that backup and that support for, you know, when you get stuck, we all get stuck. I mean, yeah. No matter how many years you've been in practice, no matter no matter how much you know, there's always going to be something that's going to yeah. be a curveball that you, you know, or you, you're just not getting the results you wanted and like, what else can I do? Mm -hmm. So it's, it's very valuable that yeah. way. Awesome. Um, do you have any other thoughts you'd like to share with your uh, colleagues before we close out? <laughs> I don't think so. I think this has <laughs> been really a lot of fun and I really appreciate it. Good. Thank you yeah. so much, Dr. Sika. This was such a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. you.